All right. Hey, good afternoon. Welcome July 7th, Friday, weekly podcast, Team Lathrop. Yes, good afternoon. How are you doing today? Great. TGIF, as they say. That's right. We have a list here of a few topics to cover. So you want to kick us off? Yeah, I I guess key number one is, yeah, be in tune with what the market's doing. And um, it's had a lot of ups and downs this week, you know, in reference to the mortgage market. And, uh, you know, check with your lender on rates daily. Uh, For example, you know, Freddie Mac posts every Thursday the rates from the previous week. So it's kind of a misrepresentation. It's a week old. So it's really key with what's happened this week. So our rates have moved up and be aware of that when you're out there shopping, you know, and make sure your pre-approval is updated so you're ready to go because this market's still competitive, you know, and so those things are key. So when you are talking about interest rates and you're pre-approved and you're shopping, you really need to call your lender every, like when you're trying to get an update or can you just go check the news and see what the, what the rates are doing? Because like you said, Freddie Mac puts out this news and they have a rate survey. Well, the key, I, I think, is check in with your lender because that's who's providing the, the loan for you. Uh, stuff can be all over the internet and over the news and not quite as accurate as a person you're dealing with. So check in with them. Um, and if you're consistently shopping daily, because if your pre-approval is tight, you know, something could push you up or over. There's other another options maybe to help you keep that pre-approval solid. Um, so yeah, definitely check with your lender would be my, my advice. Another thing I want to touch on when we're looking at those rate surveys and some of those, the news headlines, cause you don't always want to call your person every day. You know, we've done business with people and, uh, you want to do some of the things on your, on your own, but really getting local versus looking at national news trends really seems to make a big difference in the real estate market as well as the financial lending market as well. Yeah. The national trends, uh, you know, everybody's doing their twist out there, what they want to report. And the market's doing this, market's doing that. Well, every, every, it's where you buy in. You're not buying a piece of every state in the country. You're buying where you are in your market, what your trends are. And what we see locally, like in, here in Thurston County, is basically we're still seeing the big issue in the, in the country, lack of inventory. So that affects the supply, demand, the pricing. That They think rates are dropping. I mean, excuse me, prices are dropping. Not when there's no inventory. You know, you might be able to get a good deal out there somewhere, but it is, it's still a tight market. And so you got to be prepared for that and have all your ducks in a row. Well, and also, if you think through why it's a tight market, you kind of get some understanding as to why it might remain a tight market because people have all these great interest rates and low monthly payments. And so to move it just seems unsurmountable with the difference in the payment you're going to get into versus the one you might have now. So People that have real estate with great rates, they want to just stay put and they're really loving their low payments right now. And builders, you know, everything is expensive and timelines are still out there. So that kind of kind of exacerbates the difference between the two. I think about builders, though, is they're creating the inventory. They have the inventory. So they've got a captured market right now. So that's one one plus if you're in an area where they're doing a lot of building. Um, y- you know, it's just a it's make sure that you know exactly where you're at because the market is moving daily basis. You know, rates are, are up in the sevens, which is a number we haven't heard in a while. And it's still, there's still great products out there. And the key thing you want to do with your lender is compare the products. You know, there's FHA, there's conventional, which one's better for me? Um, and in a given situation, because every borrower is different, credit scores are a big factor, you know, and make sure you've prepped all that stuff and gone through it so you're ready to roll. So going back to kind of the news trends and headlines for just a, one, one more minute here, something I always see in national news, it's actually almost comical, but they're always saying now is not a good time to buy. You should wait. You should wait. Wait either for prices to come down or for interest rates to come down or, you know, when the interest rates were down, you got to wait because everyone is bidding, you know, it's too competitive out there. So you don't want to get involved with that market. Yeah. I mean, the, what they say, 20 and 21 were the best rates ever in the history of lending. We're never going to go back there. That was that that was not normal. That was abnormal. And so everybody thinks that's where we're going to go. That's not where we're going back. We're hopefully if we get back in the fives or maybe fours would be incredible. Um, and so back then they're saying, hey, don't buy now. Prices are going up too fast. You're going to overpay. Well, look what the market's done. The market has appreciated each year since then. And again, that goes back to the inventory issue and, and supply and demand. And then the, you know, the key is if you didn't buy then, it's more challenging now. Prices have gone up, rates are higher. 
So, and then they said, they also came out and said, hey, when rates, rates will go up and when they do, the price will drop a hundred grand for every 1% that go up in interest rate. Yeah, what's happened? Prices have not come down. Yeah, <laughs> rates have gone up. So whatever they're saying, there's a whole lot of stuff on there and they're not accurate. Talk to your lender, get tuned in to where it is now. If you're in the market and can afford to buy, it's a great time to own a home because that's the ultimate dream. Also, again, that's a local versus national thing again, too, because if Tennessee is going gangbusters and they're selling like hotcakes and there's a great market down there and a good opportunity to buy, it might not be the same thing in Los Angeles or Seattle or Orlando, for example, if you go around the country. So, yeah, I agree. It's, it's where you are, you know, tune into your market. We lend in 11 states. So there's 11 different markets and they may be very similar, but depending on the pockets in your market, I, th I think even Redfin came out and said, oh, hey, prices in Seattle have gone down 38,000. Jeez, what's the average price in Seattle? If it went down 38 grand, that, that's nothing. And um, so compared to, but Thurston County, we've got a, we're still in that, well, we want to call it an affordable price range, which is where people can afford to get a home. And there's lots of homes, you go out a little bit further, there's all types of things that might become available. And always the option to build too, if you can find the land and do that as well. Um, so it's key to find out, you know, zoom in on the details with your lender. And that, that's go through it. Be thorough. It's not just what you're rating fee. If that's all you're getting from your lender, you're not doing their job. And um, it's a lot more than that. It's finding out your exact situation and the products that'll match up to you. And then you choose that. Don't let them put you into a product just because they think it's great. They may be right. You may end up selecting that product. But compare what's out there. Let them go through the details. Find out about your financial situation, your future plans. It's more than just a quick stop thing. Speed is good in getting approved and in the whole process. That's absolutely correct and getting the loan process done. But the prep to get into it, that's where you really want to make sure they've taken the time to go through it with you. Well, and so I think that kind of goes back to our current outlook, which our current outlook, I would say, is almost pretty steady regardless of what the market is doing. You want to get pre-approved, figure out exactly what you're qualified for. And that doesn't change regardless if rates are awesome or if rates are increasing and we're in a volatile market uh, that may be viewed as, you know, slightly more expensive. Well, it's not viewed. It is more expensive right now. So, you know, it's it's get pre-approved no matter what the market's doing. Find out what you can do and then see if there's options out there for you. But you're not going to know what those options look like unless you have the conversation with a lender. No, and don't and, you know, don't be afraid to, to do it officially. I mean, you have to pull your credit report and and pick a lender. Don't go to five different lenders. I mean, you can shop them, but don't make, just pick the one you want to do business with when you're ready to go and let them do the work for you. And um, we love dealing with local. We're with a, the one reason we ended up here. It's a local lender. They're transparent. They're a non-bank entity, which there's enough volatility going on in the, in the country right now. Go with a solid performer that's been around a while. And, uh, you know, they've been around here since 1987 which is awesome. And uh, so that's the stability and they're, they're in it and they're, they want them. And not only that, they give us the tools to make it a better situation for you because some of the tools we have like high rates today, we've got a buyer booster. You buy a home today, we're going to give you 2,500 bucks toward a refinance in the next two years, which pretty good chance the rates will make a movement in that time frame, And that's, that's amazing. It's just something to help you, you know, get to the next level. So, to help each borrower one at a time. And uh, that's the key, because we're dealing with individuals one at a time as we move forward. And hopefully they get the respect and the time to get ready for to be able to compete in this market. Well, and that is, like you said, one of the reasons that we love working here, it's because you take the civility of the length of time we've been in business, and then all the innovative tools that we talked about on our last podcast, you kind of have stability plus innovation at the same time. They're kind of right on that sweet spot of, you know, lending in 11 states. So we have a good footprint, but we're not massive. We're not bank. So we have a little more transparency. Um, and those things make us feel good, make us feel like we're home here. Well, the key thing is, I think, and I, I love it, is the efficiency. And uh, we got some great coworkers, which doing good volume, which is great. So we know our system can get the volume through. And that's, the, that's a key because if you can perform, you know, that way, then with all the other products we have to help people get in or help agents get a property sold, whatever it may be, that's the difference we want to make for people in our market. 
And something else that I wanted to go back to when you were saying pick a lender, I think when you're shopping, you know, you want to know what's your rate, what's your fee, and then talk to the lender and see kind of what's their vibe as well. But really shop for a strategy, shop for a mortgage advisor that's going to talk you through the process, ask you all the detailed questions, not just say, hey, you're pre-approved, your rate's seven and a half, call me later. Like that, that's not really, and maybe if that's what you're looking for, go ahead and, you know, to each their own. But I really think it's important to, to go over all the things, shop for someone that's got the strategy that fits you, because there might be different reasons to do different things for different people. Uh, it's, that's key, Jeff. The, one of the biggest things is the big myth out there that people, you know, you don't go out and buy a house every day. So people just hear things, they heard it from their parents or their uncle or whatever. Everybody thinks they have to have 20% down. Now, ultimately, if you have that, that's fantastic. If you don't, there's plenty of variables out there with as little, you know, three to 5% down. And there's products out there that'll get you into the home today. You know, and, and if you're thinking about your dream home, it may take a few steps to get there. It may not be the first home. The key is get somewhere, get started. You can build that equity and grow to the next step and go from there. But um, yeah, talk to you, talk about the options because if you're waiting to save 20% and you think I'm gonna save 5% a year, if the sell, values go up 1% a year, you're already behind. Right. So, and it's hard to save money. And we know, you know, everything. And so the point is, is find out exactly where you're at, get a starting point. And may, maybe now is not the time, but you know, then you got a plan if it's six months, or a year, then you can lay it out and go go forward and, and go with it. And then if the market adjusts, they may move your plan further or closer. But be ready, and that's the key thing. Your agents are out there; they're working hard, you know. And it's it's been a tough market, and they want to know that you're ready to roll when it's time to go, and uh, and that you can roll. And so <laughs> make sure your lender is in tune what your plans are, and they're in tune with you. So and you're doing a weekly. I hate, you know, in this market, it is a weekly update because the market is moving around like that. So, and if you're shopping, actively shopping, you want to be in, in communication like that. And I'm not trying to say that these things are outrageously complicated, uh, but you just need to make sure that you go through your checklist and you ask all the questions and you go through it. So it's not, oh, we're, you know, so smart, brilliant advisors, but we've done this enough times to know, hey, don't forget to ask these questions because... You, hey, have you ever, you know, been in the army? Are you a veteran? Uh, maybe they qualify for veteran loan and they don't realize it. There's all sorts of things out there that, um, you know, if you don't go through and ask every single question, even if it might seem, hey, just bear with me. I'm going to ask you 18 questions right now that are sort of boiler, boilerplate. Um, but just to make sure that you uncover those boxes that you might have not uncovered in your normal conversation. Absolutely. Because income's a factor. There are certain products that are based on income. Geographic location is a factor. There's products based eligibilities that give you other opportunities that you may not know about unless you go through those details. That's why, you know, there's so much more than just getting, you know, uh, yes, I'm approved. Get to those details, talk to your lender. Hey, they're, they're, they're all here. They've done their homework. You know, they want to help you get to that next level. And um, so utilize that, use their, use their expertise. And if you're not feeling like you're getting that information, you know, ask them and then you got to create that that comfort zone that you pick the right individual or, or lender to work with. And um, because they're not all exactly the same and some of the tools aren't always all the same. So take your time, um, but get in there and do that first. So when you find that house, and you get all excited about it. You don't miss it because they're hard to find. Absolutely. Yeah. OK, well, before we uh, wrap up here and if you have any clothing Cl closing thoughts, let me know. But how was your 4th of July as we just got through the holiday? Hey, we're here? safe and sane. And uh, we happened to be one where we got to watch a display and didn't have to blow anybody up. <laughs> and that was that was great. It was awesome. It's great to be with family and celebrate the independence of our country and really realize what that is. Kind of like home, home ownership, right? Yeah. An opportunity. It, it's something we have the ability to do here. And there's a lot of places you don't have these opportunities. So we get, you have to appreciate it, appreciate the days. But best of all, here we are in Olympia, Washington, and it's 70 plus degrees consistently. And we're going into all-star weekend, in Seattle, with, uh, it's gonna be incredible. The, probably the best weather, we'll probably get more people moving here now, watch out. <laughs> but um, anyhow, yeah, it's awesome. I was great, great fourth, and I'm looking forward to all-star weekend and uh, another, another week ahead. Great, sounds fantastic. Well, thanks for the time today. It's always fun to sit down together, and I'm looking forward to our next podcast next week. Sounds great, have a great weekend. All right, see ya. All right.